Hi, I'm Robert Horton. I'm a member of the National Society of Film Critics and the programmer, historian, and resident at Scarecrow Video. I'm pleased to say that uh, once again, I'll be leading Scarecrow Academy uh, in 2022. Uh, this online discussion group presented by the nonprofit Scarecrow Video in Seattle will take as its focus the art in sci-fi, science fiction, and the director. Uh, we'll be looking at 10 classics of science fiction cinema, discussing them with an emphasis on how the, how the art of directing manifests itself on screen. You don't have to have attended any of our previous classes uh, to join us at any time in this one. The series is free and will take place via Zoom on Saturday afternoons, 2 p.m. Pacific time. You can go to the Scarecrow Academy page, which you may be on already, uh, to find the link that you can click on. Scarecrow will get back to you with information on how to register for any of our sessions. Our semester continues on March 12th, Saturday again, with uh, a conversation about the 1956 film Invasion of the Body Snatchers, directed by Don Siegel. I will briefly introduce the film and the director here, uh, hoping that will be a jumping off point for uh, Saturday's talk. We make quite a leap from uh, our first week, uh, Fritz Lang's Metropolis, very grandiose uh, project and an enormously ambitious director, to a film uh, this week that, uh, while it's full of ideas, is uh, comparatively stripped down, very compact, swift moving, directed by a Hollywood filmmaker renowned for his no-nonsense professionalism. Don Siegel was born in uh, Chicago in 1912. He uh, spent at least part of his education in Cambridge, uh, the Cambridge in England, that is, and uh, ended up getting a, an entry-level job in Hollywood because, as he said, there's only one way to get into pictures. If you have as little talent as I have, you have to know somebody. Siegel had an uncle who knew Hal Wallace at Warner Brothers, and he was on his way. And in fact, he spent seven years, which he later called the most exciting uh, time in his film career, doing montages at Warner Brothers. In other words, a, a movie would need uh, a sequence that joined together two different sections of the film or, or suggested the passage of time. And instead of having the director spend his effort uh, shooting the, the little inserts and, and combining it with stock footage or whatever, to, to make, the, um, to make the, the montage work, Siegel would take that specific need as his job. And his success there led to him being uh, assigned a couple of short film projects, one narrative and one documentary, which if you believe Siegel's account, he, he, he sort of disdained in both instances, but uh, which both won short subject Oscars in the same year, uh, 1945. So by the time Invasion of the Body Snatchers came along, uh, Siegel had been directing features for a little, little over a decade, uh, mostly in the low-budget realm. Uh, he, he spoke of uh, Invasion of, of the Body Snatchers as one of his best, if not his best film, although he would go on to, to a varied career, uh, showing special talent for crime pictures, and finally coming up with a bona fide uh, smash with Dirty Harry, uh, one of a series of very interesting projects that he did with Clint Eastwood, whose own directing style uh, has surely been influenced by uh, Siegel's example. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is based on a novel by Jack Finney that was uh, serialized in Collier's magazine a couple of years before the movie came out. It's been, so, been a while since I read the book, but I remember it as being very effective a science, fi science fiction scenario. I quite liked Jack Finney's stories when I was uh, an adolescent reader. Although I think the ending uh, differs pretty significantly from the movie's ending. And we are going to talk a little bit more about the movie's ending uh, later and, uh, and definitely on Saturday. Siegel worked on the screenplay with Daniel Mannering, who has some notable credits in his uh, writing career, including having written the novel and the screenplay for one of the greatest titles in film noir, Out of the Past. Invasion's producer was Walter Wanger, uh, someone Siegel spoke of highly in, in later years, who also knew something about noir. He had produced Scarlet Street and The Woman in the Window with his wife, Joan Bennett, and the director, Fritz Lang. Uh, so maybe this accounts for the way that Invasion of the Body Snatchers uh, sometimes feels like a sci-fi noir, relatively small in scale, uh, heavily invested in shadows and a noir style in, in presenting the unmistakable sense that, that something is very wrong underneath the, the seemingly placid surface uh, of an American small town life. Indeed, this, this is at the heart of the movie's vision. 
That uh, story of small town life, of course, uh, also includes these plant-like pods that uh, are being distributed on Earth and in producing replicas of Earth people, uh, identical in every way except for an emotional life. In the 1960s, Peter Siegel told uh, uh, Peter Bogdanovich, and then back in the era when Bogdanovich was going around interviewing lots of uh, Hollywood veteran directors, I'll, I'll uh, read a little bit from Bogdanovich, Bogdanovich's book, Who the Devil Made It. Uh, Siegel said of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, uh, this is probably my best film, and I felt that it was a very important story. I think that the world is populated by pods, and I wanted to show them. I think so many people have no feeling about cultural things, no feeling of pain or sorrow. I wanted to get it over, and I didn't know a better way to get it over than in this particular film. One of the great things about Invasion of the Body Snatchers is that its central premise is simple enough that it can be interpreted in a, a variety of ways. It's commonly taken as a critique of, of the conformist era of its making, perhaps of the fear going around specifically in the blacklist era of standing out or, or seeming to be too different. Um, but that's not the only take on this movie, and, and there are others available that we might kick around a little bit. But anyway, you look at it, uh, it comes down to a fear of a world where everyone's the same as the protagonist observes at one point. This is certainly rich thematic material, but our emphasis in Scarecrow Academy is a kind of close reading to really look where the, the art of directing comes alive. And so we'll look at how Siegel treats this idea with uh, all the cinematic tools at his disposal. One hugely successful part of Invasion is the depiction of an ordinary small town, uh, except for the occasional alarming vegetable matter in the backyard greenhouse, absolutely nothing here bespeaks a science fiction world, which makes the effect all the more chilling. Siegel's sense of tempo is also key here, as though to increase the sense of a quickly unfolding nightmare. The story trips from one scene to the next with no wasted motion. You know how some movies uh, unfold as kind of a series of scenes. They just go one after the other in these big blocks and they're kind of separate and it's sort of clunky. Uh, well, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is not like that. Uh, this movie has a flow and a forward motion that maybe is not surprising uh, from someone who used to make montages for a living. And although Siegel is not a flamboyant visual stylist, uh, we can see that he, he uses space really ingeniously in this film, whether uh, summoning up a sense of entrapment from the, the cramped hallways and first floor telephone landings of houses and basements and mining tunnels, or the use of uh, the open town square uh, seen from the perspective of Kevin McCarthy's doctor's office so that it can suddenly switch from being a, a completely all-American gathering place to a, an utterly sinister locale all within a single shot. We will mention the film's framing scenes, the beginning and the very ending of the film, which were added late when the original ending was deemed to be too bleak. Uh, and we'll talk about what this does or what it doesn't do for the movie overall. Uh, there was a moment when the film got re-released with, uh, without this framing device, which is a very eerie way to experience it, especially at the very end of the film. Although that, that version seems to have, have become kind of a novelty uh, version of the movie. Invasion of the Body Snatchers has proved a durable property, having been remade a number of times now, kind of officially and unofficially, I think. We'll talk about some of those other versions and how they seem to fit their eras. It's a testament to the strength and flexibility of Jack Finney's original idea that the concept still works in whatever decade it occupies. A lot to talk about there, and I hope you will join us on Saturday, March 12th, for a conversation about Don Siegel's classic American sci-fi nightmare, Invasion of the Body Snatchers.